This year, I've been making six games with two engines, actually more than this, and I want to show you the result. I've been focusing on two things specifically, procedural generation and 3D. Most of those games have been made using either Godot 4 or Unity 6, but I also use regularly a low-level framework called Relib with either C Sharp or Python. Most of those projects are prototype for learning purposes, but some became course like my 2D procedurally generated roguelike for Godot 4, 4 and the same course in Unity 6.2. And one of those projects probably going to become my next commercial game. Do you want to guess? Leave a comment. There's an honorable mention to projects that are not actually game, like a time map editor made with C Sharp and Relib, and other things that maybe will be mentioned in a future video. So let's get started with project one. So the first game is a 2D platformer shooter that I've made uh, at the beginning of the year uh, and actually this one was a very fun one, it's pretty much complete, there's some stuff that I can tweak, something that I can make a bit better, I can make more design, but globally the logic is there, and that's a 2D platformer shooter that is procedurally generated, and it has been inspired by a YouTuber that I really much like, it's called Fluffy Potato, which make video, uh, game development video with Python. And I was loving, uh, in one of his games, I was loving the idea of having the possibility to get propelled in the air by your gun, and that's what I've done with that game. There is things that are not perfect, as you can see right now, for example, the tile map that doesn't regenerate, the tile map is destructible, but it doesn't really regenerate fully. I don't know how to fix that, so if someone knows, please tell me. But that's a very good game that I like, and potentially that's one of those games I'm going to make next year as a commercial project. The next game is a 3D game that I've made with Unity 6, and I have that sort of weird obsession uh, with recreating a Leaks Awakening, uh, the Switch uh, edition, so the, the one in 3D, uh, in different game engine. And so this one, I, I've, used that, uh, I've used that obsession to try to remake that game in Unity 6, and I kind of succeed. I like the result that I have. I spent a little bit, like I spent like something like two weeks on this, and uh, I was very happy with the result. Like uh, The thing that makes me uh, uh, take Unity instead of Godot was that Unity has already the Unity Asset Store with a lot of 3D uh, models that are already pre-made for working with Unity so that cuts a lot of the work which is great but it's not perfect as well as you can see right now like so the the enemy uh, have a, a bit of a weird behavior like you can see that it rotates weirdly i was trying to not use the nav mesh uh, agent uh, which is something that you can use to bake the place where uh, uh, the character can move uh, on the screen and i was trying to do that programmatically but that was not automatically fully working well but otherwise uh, the on the aesthetic part i was really liking the aesthetic and I think that's something that I will revisit uh, in the future. Next project is the one that I spent the most time this year, like I spent so much time working on this, which is a 2D top-down uh, procedurally generated roguelite in Godot. And uh, this really took me a long, long time. I've been focusing on creating my own algorithm based on the logic of the random walker algorithm, and I succeed to create uh, an algorithm that is very, very good and that makes it very easy to create a procedurally generated levels without having uh, the, the, the common error. But uh, it has also been very challenging for me because I was going through my surgery and I was going through a lot of things. Uh, I also made a course out of this uh, project and uh, the course doesn't work well although like I've made 52 videos explaining how I've, get, I've gotten to that result but for some reason it was not fully working well which was a bit of a, of a shame but that's okay. Uh, this is gonna be globally my next uh, my next game and uh, I'm gonna be probably releasing that game in 2026 uh, not automatically free the one that you see on the screen but very close to this the character is the same and uh, I really want to make a sort of a Godot version of Nuclear Throne. That's what I am aspiring to do with that project because uh, Nuclear Throne is one of my favorite games and I very much love it. This has been very challenging to make but I really appreciate um, the result that I have so far. I can put more detail on the ground which is something that I'm working on at the moment. I have created also different uh, enemies I will show you in a future devlog but that project has been probably the one that I spend the most time on this year and I'm really happy with it. Then the next project is globally the 3D counterpart of my 2D procedurally generated roguelite. So I was thinking that maybe I could use my algorithm uh, from the 2D version to 3D, and yes, I was able to. And this is a for now the result that I have. The main block that I have for working on this game is just uh, me 
uh, having a sort of creative block about creating 3D models. Uh, I want to make that game by myself, you see, so like I'm, I, I'm that's, I have that sort of ego where I want to make things by myself because that's what I like to do. But uh, here, uh, that's, the, 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 that's that problem that I'm facing. The game is very fun to play. It's, you have to imagine Nuclear Throne uh, in 3D mixed with Splatoon, and that's globally what the game is all about. I'm using a 3D random walker uh, algorithm. So basically, I'm creating the level uh, at launch, and then I have an algorithm that carves into it. That's what you're seeing on the screen. And then I instance element that I want uh, on specific node that cycle through uh, all the available uh, plays that has been carved. Globally, that's how it works. And that's a very fun game, very uh, original, and I really much love it. I think that's one of those games that I would like to work on for a commercial release. So that's one of those prototypes that are very important for me because when I will be finished with Lone Knight, I will uh, choose the next project. I think the next project is going to be the 2D procedurally generated roguelite. But this one is a good, uh, a good contender for the third project, uh, the first commercial game that I want to release. So I'm very happy with this one. It's a very fun one. Then I've been working on the Unity version of my game Lone Knight. I have one uh, issue with making Lone Knight uh, with Godot, which is that in Godot, uh, Godot has two engines. It has the 2D engine and the 3D engine. And in the 2D engine, you have the parallax uh, layer that you can use, but it's fake parallax, where in Unity, as you can see right now, the uh, parallax is the real one, because Unity is a 3D engine, and when you are making a 2D game with it, you're still making a 2D game in a 3D environment. So you, just what you have to do is to change your camera from orthographic to perspective and then anything that you put inside the uh, the level you can see right now all the sprites that you're seeing right now are put at different coordinates on the z-axis and uh, globally because of that it creates that uh, very nice parallax effect that is a real parallax and that's something that i really much like and so i've been toying with that idea uh, in unity i really much like the result but i'm gonna stick with godot for making a for making a releasing long night because i still think that the game is very advanced and that will take way too much time to remake it in Unity. Then this project is a very interesting one because this project is actually something that I've tried to, to, to use for overcoming my block. Uh, and so that's a 3D game with 2D sprite. <laughs> and so that's what is called HD 2D or 2D HD, depending uh, from people to people. But globally, that's like uh, the type of technique that Octopath Traveler are using, or like the old Pokemon that you were using, uh, that you were playing on the Nintendo DS. That's what uh, that's the technique that they are using. And here I'm doing that with Godot, and I am very happy with the result. I think it looks something. I think it, it gives a vibe that is pretty cool. Uh, obviously, I can work on it a bit better. Here you can see, for example, that I'm changing the projection from orthogonal to a perspective, which changed completely uh, the logic of the game. You're going to see that now everything is a bit more stretched out and stuff like that. And you have, uh, you can play a lot with the camera. You can play a lot with like everything. And that's something that I want to continue to investigate. I don't know. Maybe I will make a, a course out of it, or I will make a YouTube video out of it. I don't know yet what I can do with that. But I really love the the the, the vibe of it. And for me that helps me to overcome the block that I have to make my own model in 3D at the moment because I don't know why but like it, it's very overwhelming for me to make a 3D model at the moment where uh, which is a shame because I very much know the process of making a 3D model and how to animate, uh, animate them and ring them. But for some reason, I have some blocks. So that's how it is. But I really like that uh, project. Tell me if you like it because I could make something out of it. Then the next project that I've made was translating my 2D procedurally generated roguelite from Godot to Unity. And this has also become a course because there was not much things about how to make procedurally generated roguelite in Unity. So I've made a course on Udemy. I will put the link in the description. Uh, and globally, this has been one of the projects that I've been spending the most time on as well. I've been working on this from uh, August to September, and that was uh, quite a big project uh, that I've made. It was not supposed to be that big, but now it ended up being a nine-hour course, and so I really much liked it. I think that globally, uh, Unity is a very, very good software for making those type of game. The only problem that I really had was uh, um, figuring out the Y sorting because the Y sorting in Unity is uh, a bit more complex than the, the one that you have in Godot. And so I had to, at some point, code my own logic to uh, 
uh, be able to uh, create a while sorting that is um, that is working well, where the player is displaying on top of something, and then it can be displayed uh, at the, the the back of something, depending where it is. But globally, the thing that I appreciate the most is that Unity makes everything so easy when you want to make your code modular. And that's the thing that I don't like uh, about Godot. I think Godot Godot is a bit modular, but it's not as modular as Unity in terms of coding. I think Unity on that front has the edge simply because you can uh, break down the logic of one uh, script into several scripts that you can attach to the same game object. So here, for example, my player has different uh, different scripts that are, are underlying different things. And that's something in Godot, you can do that, but you need to attach one script to one node. So you have to create one node just for attaching one script. And that's a bit cumbersome. And that's something that little by little has started to grow a, a certain form of... Uh, hate <laughs> you know i really want uh, godot to at some point being as modular as unity and then the last project was globally me trying to figure out how to make my own custom game engine and my entry gate was to try to make a tile map editor for uh, for my game engine and so globally here what you're seeing is me uh, uh, having created those windows so you have like the tile map uh, a window and you have the uh, viewport window and globally i've created that in c sharp uh, using a framework called relib and i've created everything by myself and i have uh, created the um, the UI is using uh, Dear I'm GUI, which is a very common uh, UI tool that you can use for creating your own game engine. And it was something very cool that I very much like. That's something that I'm going to continue to investigate in the future, but for now, that's not my main priority. So this is all the game that I've made in 2025. There's actually a bit more uh, in the background, but things that I can't automatically fully show because there's not much things to show. Uh, things that are, were mostly prototype for testing some ID. But surprisingly enough, I don't have the feeling that I've done much this year, although I've made all those, uh, <laughs> all those little game and prototype. Uh, probably it's because I haven't released a, a game. At first this year I was supposed to release two games, but between my surgery and the aftermath of it, plus all other things that have happened to me uh, in between uh, that year has been a pretty tough one and so uh, I choose to make those little projects as a way to uh, prepare the future and so here I'm very happy that I've made the groundwork uh, so in 2026 when I will have released uh, Lone Knight I will be able to uh, jump into another project without to have too much problems into finding something that stick with me. I already have the groundwork for all those projects between the 3D games, the 2D procedurally generated game, the 3D procedurally generated game, and so on and so on. So I'm very happy about this. So I hope this video has been helpful and motivating for you. Me, I want to wish you a very good end of the year, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.